Hello, my name is Kevin Bateman and this is We Can Break in, Into the Other Consciousness. Mosley Bog, Birmingham. The elected ones. Furious. That we do not listen. They suffer. Stress. Pain. And cancer. We inflict by not listening. Power is unimaginable its fever uncontrollable. They hunt us, are we prey. Inside a lighter purple, we speak to them, they teach us, we rectify their loss. They will belong to us when they die. In this harsh realm, the sun escapes. You are elegant. Corkscrew. Take the time he made up the gaps between what was and could have been. Chunks of elaborate scenes that often play out muted or in black and white. Elements to further speculate about remain blurred at the corners. For now, just for now. Take now on a certified air of reluctance, a swamped out stomp. Take the times that didn't come free. Take those and run. Reclaim the mulch, celebrating in mud baths. Method. Fragile. Winged and unhinged dust moth, a pear in the air, fist in the mud. But she didn't fire a question. She boasts about her eye of detail for detail and has been known to spot misplaced flecks of dust. Unlike misgiving attentions, that's a story for another time, the one about the broken mind, and this is the one about the process. I'm not sure she'd admit or even know she was shaken, beaten, short of mold, first feeding the distinguished, abruptly relegated to mediocre carrying. Her ledgers and journals filled to the brims, notes above edits, outside of margins. Once the first results are gathered, the spindly lines from the gut to the brain, from the medulla to the sphincter, are drawn in chalk, but we've had no rain. Her research yielded early results. It took longer for white coats to shine. Even then, the tail was painfully pinned. Incorrectly, inconsistently, irreversibly. And although her eyes were open, she still can't tell if purpose and care were incessant or seldom in place. Conclusions reached. Everyone has a different say, a better cure, a you-know-what, and a friend of a friend who might have been a little bit better or worse it is just a parachute, a dust sheet to wipe the real whiteboards. All that ink must turn to crumbs as it sticks to the particles of suit and skin that go all the way from furthest to far. Next word is hers to say, and it will be final. To be. I don't want to be like you, to be right when I'm obviously wrong, to decorate stories with tinsel lies or brighten them with misleading lights and hold shades of I've done there, I've been there, always before anyone else. Double-breasted jacket, infinitely edged swords, single objectives. Never to demand an orbit round deep filled holes, whether southern with sticks or fecal mouths vomiting rehearsed words in an incorrect order. And a little happy one for us here. You, specialise you, seen differently. What radioactive spill made gamma waves from your gaze? The arrow goes across the page all the way to the right, past the knot in the wood, dreams of bricks, coats of lead. Further across, through a river of salt, over dales with no death, depth, what shade fades diluted in plastic cups? half full, 
conditioned responses. Which hue comes through if you squint or rub? It still rings true. They were open this time. Thank you. I'm going to read a few poems. Uh, I don't think any of them have titles. Um, I want to be in snow so cold with you I start crying. I want to be in rain so hard with you that I feel naked because all my clothes are stuck to the skin. I want to spend a day swimming with you on a beach so hot that the skin on the back of my neck starts to peel and I have one beer and I feel nauseous. I want the wind when I'm with you to push me to the ground. I want fog so thick that I can't see you but I can feel you feel you holding my hand. I want extremes outside to match the ones inside. I play on dating apps in between panic attacks half asleep on friends sofas. I tell them I like karaoke and my dog but what I really like is being held. I took a break when the breakup was imminent and me and my dad went to Amsterdam. His health is not great and when he's tired or stressed he struggles to walk. He stood there on the pavement, eyes wide, legs not moving, stuck. Groups of youths would pass him and shout and jeer and try to high five him because to them he looked totally fucking stoned. Swearing okay. Sorry, I should have checked that. Yeah. He didn't understand what was happening and this made him more tense which made it harder to move. I was away from a life I did not want, watching a death I did not want. I cannot scream, fuck off to the other side of the bar to the man who is depressing me. I cannot scream, I see your fucking shoulders and your hands and your eyes and I recognise my dad a few years ago. I cannot tell him to fuck off because this is a public space, this is mine no more than his. But he's fucking depressing me, this old man, because he's making re me remember just how old and how ill my old man is, and I'm in the middle of a fucking date. I order another Negroni, um, the rest are lighter. When it rains, my dog looks at me like I've made it happen on purpose, just to piss him off. I download all the apps and ask my single friends for advice. I look for women, I look for men, because it feels unacceptable to feel only hetero desire. I do not stop flirting with men until I invite one over to suck me off and he arrives and grabs my cock through my trousers and I feel nothing at all. Yes, there are already too many mediocre male poets writing bad self-important verse about their dicks, but none of them have my face, my name or my beautiful cock. Um, sex and drugs and bad free verse poems because poetry is the new rock and roll. After Leonard Cohen, my hair is gone and my friends are grey. After Chris Christopherson, I'm a walking contradiction, partly truth, partly fan fiction I have written myself. After the Rolling Stones, I was born in a crossfire hurricane, by which I mean one of the most consistently underperforming hospitals in the country. After the Arctic Monkeys, I bet I look good on the dance floor dancing to indie rock like a teenager from 2006. After David Bowie, time takes a cigarette but I wouldn't put one in my mouth unless I'd had some Mandy which always makes me chain smoke. After Shania Twain, man, I feel like an actual grown-up man now. I like karaoke my dog. Who needs rock and roll when you have sex and drugs and bad free verse poems? I put my poo-poo on the ceiling. I put my poo-poo on the floor. I put my poo-poo in the toilet, but there's poo-poo on the door handle. And this is my last one. Clean your sheets and hide the David Foster Wallace. Leave an Anais Nin on the bedside and strew condoms on the duvet. You're a responsible literary man, not an irresponsible literary boy, who knows that real women, unlike the women in books, get off on not getting chlamydia. Don't mention Brett Easton Ellis, unless to say you never liked him. Even when you were 18, you could tell he was hateful. Your favourite female writer is not Virginia Woolf, though of course you prefer her to Joyce. All the women who fuck men like you have been with so many literary boys with their lovely educations who think a room of one's own hasn't dated at all. They'll believe you if you say Ursula Le Guin, but Atwood's almost as obvious as Wolf. Whisper about Sharon Olds, Anne Carson, Claudia Rankine in between probing kisses. Talk about Joan Didion, Afra Ben, Rennie Edo Lodge as you both undress, but then stop talking, especially about books. Because if she thinks you're more interested in Plath or Dickinson Quinn than tongue nipples clit, and don't expect another date. Thank you. So, I'm going to be reading from my book and um, I work intuitively very much and I feel for this particular reading, um, I will just be furling the book 
and choosing something um, I guess you could call it a serial poem because the book is divided into zones so it really doesn't matter okay I embrace you like a crooked thought is mine power the new experience slammed I hear its call a muse a muse a muse it crows and scintillates I hearken to whose ember power we are all post day in this house a wondrous way to fall the symbols of physics rearrange mind prettily the perfect formation of clock and cat a beguiling gusto at reaching the halfway mark wielding steady shears to anoint the august how many ways do i love i explode like a panic in a fever i want to eat your face and tie ribbons in your hair a precise droning fills the atmosphere calculated flashes ripping through overhead in the gray distemper of an unkindled morning all sleep through this there was no day after only the polished now recurs convincingly a shallow elegance this perfection a wizen cloth face becoming like a barnacle in the moon mind visage and then again tides rise as this night clasp never shine if never was ever was but then again a sequel only true like managed madness engaged in a fine precision placed in the imperfection of the eye when again an auspicious cross destination manifests tail wagging in hollow space full of time like an echo of friends an echo of friends in a telepathic photograph held in the hall of mirrors when was again ever happening am i living happily ever happening when was there an ever said an awareness bringing into jellyfish jelly ground jelly sky i am swarming every angle of my body is to become invisible creatures destroying creating creatures destroyers creating destroying creatures creating destroyers an element of disturbance pitch perfect contemplating disturbance contemplating disturbance contemplating disturbance qualifying gratification in immense proportions but always there was never ever after before again thank you sick thick or lazy there are heart-shaped marks found in every town saved away in safe places hiding in plain view from eyes not looking space is in heaven where only the lights of the town fit to its crooked shape others are carved in fingernail deep roman spelling out the familiar name for our fierce boy it was a thousand steps up pennyworn hill a blood moon rinsed to the black hills moon he took his heart out of his chest and planted it in the earth then left to look for work this poem is called islands my promise to the ghosts has brought me home to my fields of a boy my frontiers my islands of play are gone the impossible blue turned from the golden to the common stars i could name and i traveled on its turning lived in its distance when the rain fell from a crack in the blackbird shell it fell as white fire spitting off the whale crest of bedrock on the hill soaking the black rye of summer it was the only thing that wished life on the crab apple trees if you grew up near the church 
you would play in the long grasses of its graveside. If you grew up in the mountain, you would play on its edge, spinning with the candle flies of town, and be careful of your step amongst the whites of its fogs. The luster of my ghost has found me a bowl of wood ash, where to set these flowers that never bloom. While lifelines hide and unwashed hands, my bone palms softly bruise from the welcome cup of my fathers. See how the love lines are around the eyes and mouth. Like the ambushed sun through the bitten trees, they are born on the stomachs and worn on the hips of our mothers. That much hasn't changed in fortune town. Then cut me through the middle. See my acid of life, like stacking dolls of mother and father and mother and father. I have this land within me, retreated between the marrow and the bone. And although I chew on my cord so often to somehow rid me of legends, or on a day where I forget the name for heart, I see the sky is brightest in the western arch to home. Uh, this next one is called The Last Time You Saw Strangers. The forecast ran of the coal starred hills in ice cold streams. The Atlantic left her snows as the fox killed feathered leaves. We watched the moorhens land, duck their coot heads in flashes of red into the flow of the umber spill, thick with the chill. Walking the towpath dressed as December, feeling without feet the puddle I spend and give. You kiss the sun through the strobing trees, but I am thankful for your kisses, and the graffiti in the underpasses in a dream and of spring deep in the pale reed colours. We move with hitching hands, tight and bare against the cold. We talk of the wood burning, sing of the bitter peat sting. We let the stale air out and let the goodness in. Off the idle hall road we come, and through the corkscrew rubus lines we see the town's bold colours. The last time our eyes caught with strangers, they danced with their shyness on the keen river brine. Uh, this last one is called I Was a Boy of Blue Midnights. In my jawbone youth, I'd watch the great stone drift from the blackened lush. I could see how the night slid on its fault lines in today, as I was a boy of blue midnight. My late hours were not wasted in life's dream and absence. My dreaming would run with a wolf heart in its mouth, up the necks of flower and revisions as I was a boy of blue midnights, in nights of electric easy, on warm, dimpling, perfect skin, scolding in our youth, making fortunes on the bodies of others to the tiptoe farewells of early hours. That walking light, that walking golden light, when only the morning moon knows my happy trail, and the drivers in passing cars who reminisce on watching me, on the youthful openings in single beds of the soft conquests of happiness, on watching me, remembering the windfall names of the tips of wet tongues and the teeth of beer, those mornings where the sun puts the colour back in their hair, plucked white by the thieves of being. How love's short longings have long been fed to age's fire. The burning of hopeful touches. The last drops of the hour sand glass drop. Piling high on pillows to be turned again on love. Love, my love. I was a boy of blue midnights. And a man in the threads of gold mornings. I'm going to read a few poems that are about a scientific experiment from the 60s when uh, John Lilly and um, Margaret Howe attempted to teach a dolphin to speak English. All hands on deck. The sea thrashing below a crew of Cretan sailors bound for gold. In a flotation tank, the god Apollo crests the black brine. Thought is a surging shoal, whistles and clicks. Outside of Bidford, Maine, a huge brain throbs to death on a coastal road. Men come with sores. Someone like Aristotle, walking the shore, gazed at the gleaming blue. It saw him too. Hello, it said. Hello. You and me 
and the incredibly distant island universes. This is when Margaret and John meet for the first time. One. The man behind the glass removes his gloves. The man without his gloves, glittered in salt, flips up his goggle glasses, and he looks like a woodsman training as a legal clerk, tucked tightly in his suit, savage and tall. His pockets brim with pens, his notes are damp. He cracks the door. You want to speak to me? Two. When John drinks coffee, and he does drink coffee, it's squid ink black and his jitters justified. That's how we do it in St. Paul, he says. But tell me about you. I tried. I tried to hold my threadbare quilt of life, my three good grades, weeks in the dealership, up to him, and he burnt through and charged on. He told me that he was a journalist. No, that's not right. He said a generalist, which seemed concerned with keeping people sane. Although, of course, he said, so few of us are. Stubs in the ashtray, grey mulch in the cup. If you could see into my soul, John said, assuming that you think the soul exists, what would you see? I didn't know. He told me, and it was a litany. The miles from Como to Cathedral Hill, the baseball stats for 1934, the fields of science and psychology all overlapping like a magic eye, the works of Christ, of Huxley and Karl Marx, and how it felt to drive a well-built car, guide in your hand a finely made machine, genetics as a branch of moral law, and fucking as epistemology. He used that word. Epistemology asked me to wait for him to finish work. Three. I hold the joint like a laser, scanning the surface of the moon. John bathes in thought while I just slowly pulse. And what he says is, Margaret, your mind, with all its files and drawers, all its dark rot, has barely opened up onto itself. You're still so young. I like it that you're young. But how, and tell me this, how can we hope to know, to truly know the dolphin's mind, when all we understand about ourselves is echoes, ego, a rat stuck in a tube, never suspecting life whirls on outside, when we so feebly sound our own still depths, how can we reach another consciousness? The mirror in the car is all his eyes. I didn't know. I said, I didn't know. And one more, this is a sonnet called Grand Mal. That dolphin diddled itself to death, John said, eyes glazed. Marine Land, 1957. They drilled a steel sleeve into its head and let it push the lever with its beak to trickle. Whistles, barks, bronx cheers, a jammed switch. Then blasts of airborne phonemes. Bounce from heaven. Its killing lack had stunned him into speech, like pleasure was the origin of language. That's how it was when John was called science. Alone on the farm with his father's exercise belt, age 10, he buckled into the appliance. Waves of the purest bliss he'd ever felt. Godlike vibrations. Shamed, he swore, the truth is wider than any damned confession booth. Thank you. I'm reading from Reflex Fiction Volume 1, and this is called The Geometry of Want. Think of the space, we said, pointing to the square on the page. When we climbed inside it, assembled and sturdy, it was a box full of daylight, emptiness packed with possibility. We rolled four circles inside it, and shot each other the twinkling look of people who would not have their bikes stolen again. Next, we connected the washing machine, so it could babble in China some distance from our ears. Baskets of like-minded clothes kept it company. When we watched TV in a far-off quarter, every word bounced clearly from cornices, and then onto our faces, where our cheeks gathered in arcs. Persuasion echoed from a hollow corner, until we bought space we could travel with, to pitch outside on open plains. We unzipped in curves, and slept under triangles which got wet on each edge by morning. We matched the canvas with origami sweats and brought it back to the utility room 
to sit with long poles and telescopic racks. Carefully selected cylinders of unused paint led to the freezer like a, an assault course approach. And we carried in a heavy stand mounted prism where ghost pet fish stopped revolving but semicircular eye rolls began. The floor filled to capacity. We paused from different angles to assess what could be changed, then closed the door. Possibility didn't fit in our tessellated mess. But when chests rose and fell, our size slipped into the cracks. I watch as you sketch a rectangle. We have four sonnets that are written from a collection about the sea. The Gannets, a sonnet 1916 to 2016. At the cliffs of Moha, you are standing on sharp juts, asking us questions, asking us to leave our old behind, asking if we're really here at all. Our nests were never plotted in your overhangs, your sedimentary crag, only this, us like bullets to the pilchards, bombers to the sea, streamlined slices through the waterland, just some anchoring techniques to keep our bellies still. The extreme dive, air trapping in our wings for when we need to rise back up. We have become all paddles, water eyes, new fins, so we can get and get our daily bread. These things, these choices, were decisions made split seconds before contact. So we ask ourselves only one question, to dive shallow or to dive deep. Shells. It was better when we let ourselves be washed up, when you could hear the ocean in us Delights are for the unknowing, so we curtailed, bobbed like nothings with the deep dark ideas, and the deep dark ideas surfaced only as reflections of the breaths of some moon far, far away. Hollowed out, we borrowed from the world half truths that were undrinkable. We gulped, we came ill. We woke in oblivion, occupied, and began to steer our ship, fighting the currents. We forgot to check ourselves, we came strange, we found choice, we grew from the margins. Such fulfilling disaster invested in the drifters, who abandoned one another in the wreckage of their sight. The Seagulls, a sonnet 1916 to 2016. Is it time yet for us to talk again? For we have waited on the cliffs for all of days. Silky hen, bluefoot booby, gannet, puffin babe. These have also shagged their fate here, to mow her, to this blunt edge, to see. Is it time for us to find a meeting place? Is the weather good for you to make the move? Or is the tar still leeching out your legs, still sucking on the bone, still tacking for a skin? Is it better that we stand and wait some time more? All days feels like the oceans of our feathers suffocating white, like a passing of our brains and Dumb as ever, we could be patient, we could endure nine whole seasons, if you will promise. Do you promise? Do you dare that you are sure? It could be kind of sweet to feel the quill right all inside us, twill and toss of barb froth across our beaky fair face. Looks like somewhere quiet, somewhere free. The final poem is called The Lighthouse Keeper. There is a way in to every place. What we're finding hard to pass is not an unknown gate, but our very well-known back skull. Looking at it day on day from out our in-brain eye. There is a way in. 
And there is also a watch light, <coughs> often on the cliff beyond sky bright, and one quick beam to catch a word that might mean the key to that thing beyond the black interior of your out-in head. If you are unsure, little or a lot lost, look for the lighthouse keeper. He will show you where to go. He will give you enough to be getting on with. Food for thought. Ghoul child goes to breakfast club because she can't concentrate in class running on air because she can't eat words and paper. Ghoul child wears her head bald to stop her hair from rotting, <coughs> wears her nails long to more late at night. Ghoul child wants to be star of the week, the glistening caramel prize eluded by squirming numbers recoiling and retracting, clenching and clutching. Ghoul child is scooped up to a family with a big house and a bath where they tell her they would lo they will love her like her parents would if they could afford it. The next one is called Phone, the window of my soul. <coughs> he took my body. Don't take my freedom too. It's not just my phone. It's my voice from home. It's the coiled love of old friends wrapping around my earlobes. It is my ticket to fame, one tweet, tweet to transport me. It is my portal to world debate. It is my window into others' lives. It is my time capsule. A fair trial will have me stand on a stage with a predator while a suited, expressionless figure blurs the lines of consent. A fair trial will have my phone, I dot e, my life in tweets, I dot e, my conversations in miniature, I dot e, my relationships on display, splashed across a faceless jury, and in the name of equality, in the name of free speech, I will hear him say, I wanted it. My refusals were confusing, muddled consent. Don't take my phone because I'm scared it proves my guilt, that every trace of every man I've ever loved is in the grooves of that sim that with every suggestive selfie proves me a slut that in the name of equality they will tear the components of my life into small molecules and call it evidence. And this one is called a quality jackpot. Life's a lottery, honey. You pick the wrong numbers. Watch the postcode jackpot of the undeserving, bathing in sea green notes like they do on TV. Sweat harder because you ain't the right colour, honey, and you ain't the right size. Those doors and windows opening, one size does not fit all. Shrink, it's automatic. No Alice in Wonderland potion required. It's implicit, not pretty, not smart, not popular, not important. Shouts if you like for a quality of opportunity through a megaphone. You're gonna need it. Rise above the marketplace of ideas and dreams. Give your thoughts wings. And um, one last one um, to give you context. Um, this one is about Hiroshima. Fortune teller, ask, have we learned from our mistakes? Our leaders smear blood on our faces, ask. If a necessary evil breeds death in women's wombs, ask. If our history has wiped out their future, ask. If we can grow from passivity, shout for you were born bloody, but do not have to go on that way. Wash, wash, for we are born into many layers of filth. Hello, my name is Kevin Bateman and this is We Can Break Inside the Other Consciousness. I give you Mercedes Fonesca. Fonseca. I give you Scott Manley Hadley. I know. Bad. Bad. Sorry. <laughs> Christopher Hopkins. Oh, so, I want you to all bow. So, Dr. <laughs> Richard O'Brien. 
Jolie Dutton, Maryam Hassavi, Isabel Kenyon, and that's every, and Sasha Akhtar. Akhtar. Sorry. Akhtar. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Apologize. <laughs> and we all bow together. One, two, three. Thank you all very much. Hey.